This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, so we got us a package unit here that they called in about, I guess, last month. They found a bunch of things bad with it, bad condenser fan motor. Um, you see the belt's way over tightened because it's ready to pop out of the pulley there. Uh, supposedly uh, they had a bad compressor and it had a bad condenser fan motor and burnt contactors and some other stuff. So. The way they're describing it to me, I'm thinking that we have another compressor probably it's shorted. And just to make sure this is the right one, because I didn't diagnose it, somebody else did. I'm going to go through and make sure that it's actually bad if this is the one. So we just made sure our meter's working. Let's go through here. I like going to ground. No audio. Checking meter, nothing there. Nothing there and nothing there. Go over to the next one, ground it. Nothing there, nothing there, nothing there. Go over this one, nothing there, nothing there, and nothing there. Let's go between them. One ohm, one ohm, one ohm. I like the assembly line approach. 0.9 it was, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, 1, 1, and 1. So our compressors all seem to be fine. So I'm kind of curious on that one. So yeah, I don't know, whatever. So unless this ain't the right one, Oh, and then supposedly our contactors are bad. Let's take a look at those real quick. If you're not getting good electrical, that could be an issue. The power is off. There we go. A little burnt there. I'm running my other bag because I was doing some maintenance stuff that was like not requiring all that extra weight. I was going to leave those covers off. But now that I see we have interlock switches on there, that would be a very bad idea because the interlock switches can fall out. We're gonna have to definitely put that back on because if not, like I said, that interlock right here, see that comes right out, that's not good. So we don't want that. All right, well, I shouldn't have showed you what I was talking about because that made it like more difficult, didn't it? I can get it to, if I push in on it, I can get it to lock onto it, but. There we go. Yep, and I can see it moving back here. Finally. All right. So we got to put that back on there like that. Yeah, it'd be a lot easier if I could see what I was doing, not down the way down here. Everybody puts these roof curbs in here because they don't put a match system back in, or that's all they got. Good old Klein will make it work. There we go. Make sure this is, it says K1 on this thing. It's the biggest one up here. This is the, um, Ends, I believe. There's K2. Look at my look at my sheet here again. Main breaker for K1 is tripping. When air fires up, pressure kicks on kills unit. Keeps kicking on and doing this cycle till it trips the breaker. Big visit tomorrow. So let's check our power wires, make sure they're tight, make sure nothing's loose in there. Okay. This POE, this ain't even, I still just supposedly R22, it's not that, the compressor's not shorted. I'm starting to wonder, am I even on the right one? No, I have to be on the right one. We've got repairs needed as follows. K1 and K2 have contactors that are bad and will need replaced. D3 unit, semicolon, found stage one compressor shorted. So I'm assuming D3 is actually the one. Disconnect from power and jump one stage to the other. Okay, so this one here hasn't had problems, I'm assuming. Uh, it's hard to say. Um, we know that our compressors are not shorted. Let's go ahead and turn it on and see what happens. Oh 
to go. Let's see if we can find out what K. So we got a compressor contactor. That sounded like it was in a vacuum. Getting hot. Not getting cold, that's a bad sign. Okay. Let's go to this one. Okay, and just kicked on. That one's kind of getting cold. I love that it's a funny noise. That one's getting colder. Okay. All right, so maybe we're not in the right realm here. Now this thing can get upset pretty quick because it has too many thinking thoughts. Thinkity thoughts. Okay, so we've got Y2 and Y1 jumped together. For whatever reason, they got the orange wire undone. And that used to be probably Y2 at one time. Not much going on yet. Let's see if we got power coming in on Y12 and all that happy. R, 28, common to G, 28, common to Y1, nothing. <laughs> Y2, nothing. That's weird. Now it says it has power up here. There goes one. Woo! Something just caught, kicked it out. I bet you it's a low pressure switch. Yep. And they didn't put an anti short cycle in there. That's what's going on. There we go. We just undid that. I about guarantee you it's low pressure switch because that sounds like a vacuum. Just does not sound right. That or phasing got reversed. Let's go grab a. a uh, a, uh, let's go grab a gauge. All right, we got these loosened up. I like doing a assembly line approach when I work on something with multiple compressors and stuff like that. Let's just go ahead and use the lines of the gauge. Put one, since it's on the right, we'll put that on the suction side. That way we can see what the suction's doing over here. Hmm, that don't smell real great. 200 pounds, wow, okay. 202 on that one. Let's go ahead and just bleed it. That way I'll forget. Okay, so we got plenty there. Let's go ahead and turn that back. Well, we got it unhooked there on Y1. So let's go ahead and push that contactor in and see what we get here. It's about 40 degrees. That's not a problem. Okay. Checking the left side here. We know that's going the right rotation because it's sucking down. So we're good there. Okay. Like I said, all I'm doing is checking to see where my saturation is going. If you knew, focus on saturation temperatures, don't focus on pressures. Pressures change when you switch refrigerants. If you're just doing residential, you're always going to see the same crap over and over. But, you know, when you start getting into refrigeration and you start working with five, ten different refrigerants, you start learning how to look at that instead of pressure. So pressure don't mean crap. Saturation is always saturation. 70 degrees saturated temperature on 22 is the same as 70 degrees saturation on 410A as it is on 448, 134A, YXZ, WXP, 1120055.2. Get the point. Plug this back in again. That is warm. Doing the hand touch method to kind of see where we're at on some of this. Crankcase heater. Ah, yep, yeah, they both feel like they're working. So let's go in here to this. Plug it in, see what we can get. Instantly jumps up to occupied. controller just blanked out. So you're, you're, we got to short something going on here. Now let's go ahead and put an amp meter on R. See if it's in a, in a thermostat area. It's not that, is it? That's the blower. So it's not the blower. 
go under our load side on our contactor. It's going to catch it if it's a short or at 1 amp. Nothing dropped out on that one. Let's jump over to this one. Okay, so right now we know that if it's a short, that the amperage would have spiked up there on the low voltage side. So we know it's not a short, but yet we're blanking on our controller. There's a good chance we might have a controller taking a crap. This is how we're narrowing it down. I don't work on these very often, so I'm gonna have to go a little slower uh, and make sure because they're definitely two or three dollars. We know that something's causing it to blank out. Now, sometimes what I'll do is I would uh, make sure that we're not dropping out Y, which I don't think we were. Um, I forgot to look, but that's why I was tripping the, uh, I was tripping the breaker it was just rapid cycling the compressors on and off. Well, what we could do to prevent that from happening is we actually could shut down the contactors on these so that it ain't doing that. So let's go back over here and kill the power so we can unhook the low voltage. Just common sense, guys. Just uh, narrowing it down. Is it a controls issue or is it a controller issue? Of course, I switch over to the smaller bag because like I said, I was doing startup stuff on like crap tons of mini units over and over. I didn't need all the different things that I had. Well, you're so generous, Mr. Linux. I think my description I was reading pretty much just does not apply to this particular unit. So everything I was reading was pretty much worthless to me. And they just did not make that thing freaking friendly at all. Let's put a stack of wires in the front of it. There, finally. All right. So we got the low voltage off of each contactor, so we're not short changing them now. That one's not touching nothing. That one's not touching nothing. That one's up over here, out of the way. All right. Now, our controller's blank because we got the power off. So let's go ahead and plug that back together. Let's try this again. Only nice thing about that small little bag is it fits in there so you're not you can get your in there so it ain't raining on it okay Let's see what we got here so there goes the blower y1 y2 waiting for that to cool call for giggle giggles let's go ahead and go to common we should have watched uh, r to common and then we could have seen if we were dropping voltage there as you see, we got one wire that I'm assuming might have had some issues at one time. I'm always leery when somebody just leaves that wire kind of dang on there because they can go short. There we go. We're calling on Y1 and Y2. Nothing is dropping out. Oh, there it just dropped out. So the condenser fans came on and they dropped out. Okay. So let's watch R in common now. We're 27 volts. It blanked out. Yep, and we didn't lose it there. Yeah, it acts like it's tripping something. Okay, condenser fans. Where are the condenser fans at on this thing? Outdoor relay fan number three, number two, number one. Yeah, something's having a, a hissy fit. Definitely having a hissy fit. acting like it's got a problem. Oh. So easy to see. There we go. So that fan's moving, this one's moving. That one's moving. It likes to move it, move it. Now these fans, what I've noticed with them is they love to fall out of their socket and short into things. Outdoor fan number one, two, three, and four. So down here on bottom is your low voltage or your control voltage. So if we was to unpull, we used to pull these off, that will tell us if it has anything to do with the fans. 
energizing or not. And then if it does, we'll start putting them back together as we go. All three of those are isolated. I do not know what these two here are. We can look that up, maybe, because you know how Linux is schematic is. So let's see here. There goes the blower. Oh, it just blanked out. So it had nothing to do with the, with the condenser fan motors. Let's see if we can unhook. We're just basically eliminating things. Okay, we just got Y1 unhooked, which was yellow. And no issues yet. Let's hook up Y1. Oops. Y1's being a little jumpy. Okay, Y1 is on. And blanked out the controller. All right. So you know that's not it. We could probably start looking at some of our wiring here. We've either got a controller that's bad or we got something shorted. I thought maybe it would have been one of these condenser fans or something, but it does not seem to be the case. So let's go ahead and hook those back up. There's so many things to sit there and fool around with. There's a reason why I did it that way, because it's a little quicker. What would kill the power to the controller? That's the thing that's a little wacky, because it, it, it acts like we're losing power to the controller. There we go. Ain't much to see back behind there. Three years, this thing. 5, 6, 18, so it's 18, so 19, 20, so it's about six years old. Check for wires that are shorted. Could be something in the blower section. Could be in the economizer too. The economizer could be acting uh, stupid. That definitely has gone bad once or twice. Could be something in here. That wouldn't be a bad idea to check that. Wiring goes across. Through some of that. Wow, this it's more for the heat exchanger, but they look a little corrosion. A little corrosic. But it's only do it with cooling. That's why I'm wondering if it had something to do with the economizer. Gonna hook that. That would be a load. And here's your sensors, which those easily could be junk. But that shouldn't cause it to, man, those are plugged solid. Look at that. Yeah, nothing to see here. Nope. I mean, the only thing we could do is run Y1 to it by bypassing the thermostat. So if there is something causing a short, which I don't think it would be, but on the, on the low voltage side, we could just do a straight from that to the, to R to Y, just to eliminate the, that wiring. Yeah, see, it's gonna have to call, call for G first. I go to Y1, I won't work. Go to R, Y1 only, I'll probably give a code. That actually automatically makes G go. Oh, just cut out. So we know that's not the problem. Let's go to the main menu, see if there's anything we can see here. Blower on, show status. Let's see what the data is. Select, uh, return error, discharge error. Alarm 82 cleared, 515. Today is 515. Alarming valve equals zero, controller reset. Neither up or down really works there on that. Okay, go back. Last service, select, no service event, no history, back, that's it. So under alarms, it only has one, arm 82. Arm 82. Means don't worry about it, okay? Find that book there with all the other stuff. 
back up. You know, if we're being a wholly too close, uh, overall closed, um, is it that uh, it's pretty dang smooth? I've got my RPM gauge and the reflector, reflector on there. Let's see what our blower's pulling. 7.1. It looks like a different motor. There's 8.2, 8.3. So that's about where it's always been at. We won't mess with that. Plug that back in. And like I said in the beginning, we made sure that we weren't losing our control voltage. Um, yeah, it's still doing it. Not losing any voltage on that transformer. Over here, this other one, 28 volts. Nothing lost on that one, so we're not. We don't have a voltage issue. I am leaning towards a junk controller. All right, guys. So what I ended up doing was checking with my buddy Chris over there, HVACR videos, and got his phone number for Linux. So we just got off the phone with Linux. And I had a feeling that the board was bad. So what the what we did to diagnose this was pretty much what I already done did as far as the thermostat. So I went ahead and unhooked the thermostat. As you can see, we had the old Jumper King down there. It made it a little easy because it's when I wanted to try it. I was like, wax on, wax off. Made it simple. And then he had me unplug all my outputs up here on this very top board, which is the P265. I took a picture ahead of it because I have a feeling these could be switched around in different orders. So we're gonna look at the picture for that. And so that's all your output. So basically he did exactly what I was doing by unhooking it uh, at the contactors. However, by doing it there, he's isolating it from being possible short in the uh, frame and stuff like that here. Um, so we ended up jumping it at R to Y and it still did it. And he said, hey, get her out of here. So we're gonna get, a, uh, get the information together and have them quote the board and they're gonna be warm. There's nothing we can do about it. Unfortunately, you got this big fancy stuff going on. I mean, you could theoretically, you could wire a thermostat up straight to a contactor, just like a regular split system, but yeah, we ain't doing that. So anyhow, that's what we got. If you guys enjoyed the video and you wanna see more like it, make sure you subscribe. Sorry, I haven't had some videos out lately. I've been doing a lot of different things, just not a lot of time to get everything edited. I got an awesome video coming out on the EcoFlow Delta Ultra, which is a 7,500 watt whole home battery backup system, uh, which is pretty cool they're gonna be doing. That's what I've been spending a lot of time on. And um, we'll try to get some things rolling. I got a couple of other videos that are super long that you know I gotta crunch them down from two and three hours down to hopefully 15 to 30 minutes. So anyhow, thanks for watching guys. Till next time, later.